Israel's into the second day of its largest military operation in the occupied West Bank. In more than 20 years, at least 18 Palestinians have been killed since Wednesday morning in raids on cities and refugee camps. It's raising fears Israel may destroy the territory as it has done in Gaza. Well, for more on this, we're joined now by Diana Butu, who joins us from Ramallah. She is a Palestinian lawyer and formal, former legal advisor to the Palestine Liberation Organization. Thanks very much for being with us. Can you just give us a sense of Thank you. how worried people are there, that this could potentially just be the start, that Israel could actually try and destroy much of the territory, uh, like what we have seen in Gaza over the last 10 months? This is precisely what they are going to do. Look, when you see what has happened in Israel and the fact that Israel has been allowed to get away with genocide for nearly 11 months, where they've destroyed practically all of the hospitals in the Gaza Strip, where they've bombed each and every university, and they've bombed over 70 percent of the schools, including those schools that were being used as shelters, with very little condemnation by the international community. Of course, they're going to turn their sights to the West Bank because their aim is to try to get rid of as many Palestinians as possible. And so what we've seen over the course of the past two days is systematic attacks on these two major, three major cities in the West Bank, including attacks on the hospital system, turning off the water, cutting off the electricity uh, with with no end in sight. And so it's not at all surprising that this is happening because Israel's been allowed to get away with it in the Gaza Strip. Well, well, given all of that, how are people feeling there about what is happening, what's happened over the last two days and what could happen next? It's terrifying. It's terrifying to be Palestinian and it's terrifying to be a Palestinian knowing that Israel can do whatever it wants to do and literally, quite literally, get away with it. And so we've seen that uh, Palestinians who are in the camps are the ones who are the most at risk because Israel's trying to systematically attack the Palestinian refugee camp somehow is a, a claim to try to get rid of Palestinian refugees, although they won't be able to get rid of Palestinian refugees. And so we see that people are, are quite terrified um, being a, being gunned down in their in their own homes um, as the army goes in and raids these raids these camps and raids these cities. Well, what can Palestinians actually do at this point in time in the occupied West Bank? I mean, what sort of resistance can they put up to the Israeli military? Here's the problem is that Palestinians do have the right to resist. But the problem is, of course, that nobody in the international community is supporting Palestinians in their in their right to resist. And nobody, on the other hand, is protecting Palestinians either. So we're left with a situation where Palestinians are effectively sitting ducks when you don't have anybody in the international community willing to put sanctions on Israel. And when you have instead people wagging their fingers at Palestinians and telling them that they should not resist even when there's a foreign invading army coming into their cities, their towns, their homes, then you can see what the recipe is. And this is precisely what what Palestinians like me, what lawyers like me have warned against. When you have a breakdown in the international legal system as Israel has made a mockery of it, then this is the inevitable. Diana, thank you so much for your insight uh, and sense of what it is like there in Ramallah. That is Diana Butu, a Palestinian lawyer. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.